In Chauvin, Louisiana, shrimp fishing has long been a way of life. Since the 1920s, Gulf shrimpers have brought their boats here to be blessed at St. Christopher's Church. The first European settlers in the 1700s pulled shrimp from the Gulf with nets they brought from France. David Chauvin's family has been in the shrimping business for more than 100 years. I'm uh, fourth generation. Uh, my grandpa, my great-grandfather did it, my grandfather did this, and my father. Most of these boats run one captain, sometimes two other crew members, sometimes three other crew members. The boat steams out to the fishing grounds, the nets go in the water, uh, all the work gets done, captain watches the first uh, set, okay, he's going to watch and he's going to pull the nets through the water, and he's going to tell the crew members, go to sleep. In two or three hours, he's going to wake them up. All hands on deck. Everybody comes on deck. The nets are brought up. Uh, the nets, uh, the shrimp and the fish are, are culled through or picked what we called. The shrimp is iced up in the hole. Once the shrimp's iced up in the hole, one of the other crew members is going to take the wheel. The captain and the other two or three deck hands are going to go to sleep and it starts over and over again. And this is does 24 hours a day. And like I say, most of the time, 14, 13, 14, 15 days at a time. And then the boats come back to the dock. South Louisiana gold, right here, South Louisiana gold. Uh, especially down in our coastal areas. You got certain processing plants that employ anywhere from 50 to 100 people. And then you've got so much infrastructure built around the fishing community. You've got grocery stores, fuel docks, and ice houses, and hardware stores. And if this industry was to go down, it would be devastating to this community. The long-term health of the Gulf shrimping industry is threatened by a growing dead zone, where low oxygen levels result from too many nutrients being carried into the Gulf by the Mississippi River. The reason they call it a dead zone is because when a trawler puts a trawl over, they don't catch anything when the oxygen falls below a critical level of two. Um, at one time it was called dead water. We're in dead water, we're not catching anything, let's move. And somehow it got turned into the dead zone. The area of the low oxygen uh, in, mid, in midsummer is the size of the state of New Jersey. And if you're a trawler and you're looking to catch shrimp, you can't catch any shrimp in a huge area. Now, the shrimp will move near shore, offshore, and in some instances, you may be able to do better. But that means those small shrimp aren't maturing and moving offshore to, to reach a larger size that would bring more money to the fishery. Dave Chauvin has found that more shrimp close to the coast has increased the size of his catch, but there is a cost to this easier fishing. Uh, the closer to the land that we can catch those shrimp, the better off and the higher productions are for the, for the fishermen. You know, although it's a trade-off, the shrimp don't grow as fast, the shrimp doesn't leave out of the sanctuaries and the bays. Hey Dave, y'all wanna put that back in the hole? Research shows that the amount of nitrogen entering the Gulf from the Mississippi each May directly impacts the size of the dead zone that appears during the summer. The obvious thing is to look to see how the nutrient load can be reduced. And in the Mississippi River watershed, the atmospheric component is fairly small, the city industrial component is fairly small, or the sewage in cities is fairly small. Um, that might add up to um, 30, 35, maybe 40 percent of the total nitrogen getting to the Gulf, and all the rest is from agricultural activities. So the health of the shrimp in the Gulf of Mexico and the livelihoods of shrimpers like Dave Chauvin take us far back up the Mississippi, where farmers can help by keeping nutrients on the land and out of the waterways that flow to the sea.